I love smoothies, but I don't love smoothie bar prices. With my Blendjet 2 Portable Blender, I can make smoothie bar quality beverages for a fraction of the price. Blendjet 2 is portable, so you can blend up a smoothie at work, a protein shake at the gym, or even a margarita on the beach. It's small enough to fit in a cup holder, but powerful enough to blast through tough ingredients like ice and frozen fruit with ease. Blendjet, Blendjet 2 is whisper quiet, so you can make your morning smoothie without waking up the whole house. And it lasts for 15 plus blends and recharges quickly via USB-C. Best of all, Blendjet 2 cleans itself. Just blend water with a drop of soap and you are good to go. With over 30 plus colors and patterns to choose from, there's a Blendjet 2 to complement just about any style. Go to blendjet.com and grab yours today. And be sure to use the promo code ASIANTAN12 to get 12% off your order and free 2-day shipping. No other portable blender on the market comes close to the quality, power, and innovation of Blendjet. They guarantee you love it or your money back. Blend anytime, anywhere with Blendjet 2 Portable Blender. Go to blendjet.com and use the code ADRIAN12 to get 12% off your order and free 2-day shipping. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Adrian Tan Show. On this podcast, I speak with entrepreneurs, HR leaders and coaches who have a great impact on the future of work. I hope to distill their life lessons so that the rest of us can learn from their best practices. As we welcome 23, mega trends and the pandemic have changed the way we work, what we expect from work and the overall skills landscape. Companies in Asia, including Singapore, are leveraging digital coaching and attempting to move away from one-size-fits-all learning and development approach that are not proving effective in the current environment. According to Dr. Liz Purvis, Director of Behavioral Science at CoachUp, coaching is an important lever in their transformation efforts because it is one of the most impactful interventions for driving change and building new capabilities. And to share more with us today is Tim McCartney, Senior VP at CoachUp Asia Pacific. Tim is a business builder presently charged with introducing CoachUp, the digital coaching platform, to leading organizations in the Asia Pacific region and building a world class bucket facing team. Hey, Tim, welcome to the show. Hey, Adrian, great to be here. Let's start with the big picture. How has digitalization transformed the coaching industry in recent years? Digitalization has certainly revolutionized the coaching industry. So it's enabling the democratization of coaching effectively makes it more accessible, scalable, and importantly, affordable. With a platform-based approach like CoachUp, more employees can benefit from coaching and have access to the most suitable coaches from around the world and ultimately makes coaching more measurable. So we can track, monitor, and quantify success, which helps businesses who are typically funding this type of investment. We certainly believe that the digitalization and adoption of digital coaching will only increase as the hybrid working trend becomes the new normal. And the emphasis on employee development continues to rise. How do digital coaching platforms enhance the effectiveness of coaching process? What are some of the benefits that users can actually expect? Coaching over digital platforms unlocks a new level of access and ease. So unlock some platform, uh, unlike some platforms that rely on a chatbot, for example, a coach up coaching is delivered by an actual human coach <laughs> over a science-backed digital platform with mobile and web-based applications and effectively works like you have a coach in your pocket. It's accessible to the coachee or to the participant anytime, anywhere, whenever you need or want to arrange that conversation. And so we've been able to create a, a, an algorithm that applies artificial intelligence to match employees to the right coach. Once they're matched, then they're able to work through and define what goals they want to achieve over the certain time and curate that pro- process together. And what's really interesting is this coach can be based in any part of the world. For example, I was just in Japan earlier this month and meeting with one of our clients there. And this is a Japanese woman who is being coached by a German-based coach, specifically because they wanted to improve their understanding of the business context and the environment and the company that they're working in. So we see more and more of these examples where cross-cultural borders are broken down and people are able to select and request the type of coach that would help give them many benefits, right? Which for a company, it includes increased employee engagement, higher levels of productivity, improve job performance, and importantly, increase retention. More and more, we're having conversations around organizational transformation. So thinking about 
a company's three, five, 10 year vision and what that means from a people perspective and the ability to have a coach on hand to help support key individuals and the key talent population across that kind of transformation is super important and and really resonating in the market today. How do you see digitalization impacting the traditional in-person coaching model that I believe mm. most people in the audience are quite accustomed to? Mm-hmm. Is that on its way out? A great question. And no, it's not on the way out. The traditional coaching always meant for leaders at the top of the rung and it's in-person, right? It requires a lot of hours in commute, physical meeting set up, getting booking space, et cetera, calendar coordination, and typically comes at a high price point. So there's always, there's a time and place for that piece. With digital coaching, however, companies are seeing um, the possibility of scaling coaching to these that have been forgotten. For example, mid-level executives. It's now affordable and accessible for mid-managers who are at the front lines, balancing the expectations of their teams and the demands of top management, as well as dealing with everything else that goes on in their life and uh, all the pressures of of being at home and kids and so on. It allows them a space to develop power skills, to be better leaders and help set them up for career progression. Power skills, um, we define as skills typically that were previously known as soft skills, things like empathy, self-awareness, growth mindset, and so on. And so we firmly believe that L&D and business leaders has an, have an opportunity to provide an, a space for frontline and mid-level managers to develop those skills, hone that craft, hone, hone that ability, and apply that knowledge in their day-to-day work through coaching. When it comes to any of this training initiative or learning initiative, measurement is always a thing that is being brought up. How can companies effectively measure the ROI of coaching initiatives? Mm-hmm. What kind of metrics would you suggest they should be looking mm-hmm. at? Yeah, today's L&D and HR departments, they're tasked with a wide range of initiatives. But the question always comes up, do they actually deliver business value? And if this is for all leadership development opportunities in place, I recall being at a dinner that we hosted a few months ago with CHR level executives, all talking about the challenge they were getting from CFOs today about justifying some specific investments that they've made across the organization. And it is possible to measure both the quantitative and qualitative impact of such programs. And that includes cost savings, retention, efficiencies, productivity and more. At CoachUp, we teamed up with the total with Forrester for the total economic impact report. Conservative estimates for enterprises using our AI-driven one-on-one coaching platform over three years included a 260% return on investment. Beyond that, we actually work hand-in-hand with clients on understanding what are the behavioral measurements you're looking to see, the competencies that you want to see Im- embedded or improved. And I think that's where it's becoming, we're beha- having a really interesting conversation through our coaching lab and our behavioral scientists who are actually working with HR, HR and business leaders, understanding particular nuances they're looking, for example, a change in behavior or competencies that we'll put in place. And through the activity of applying coaching and allowing the participants to practice a lot of these things or apply that learning on a sustained basis, they're able to see in terms of improvements in development gaps, which ultimately help them understand that we're actually bridging the gap for some of those behavioral changes. So it's always a really interesting discussion with our clients in terms of measuring success and helping them to, to justify those improvement measures over time. Of course, after addressing the concerns and queries from CFO, you will next Mm -hmm. arrive at the concerns and queries from the CTO Mm -hmm. about security and privacy, because these are also major concerns. How can companies Mm -hmm. then really ensure the security and privacy of employee data when using digital coaching and learning platform? We fundamentally agree. Privacy, data security are at the core of how our platform has been created and how our business has responded to the demand which has uplifted given hybrid working arrangements since COVID. Firmly believe that privacy and data protection should be at the core of every learning and development setup within a company. And you need to ensure that platforms that are used enables maximum data security. For example, multi-factor authentication, password managers, and other best practice security practices are, are essential. We as an organization align with GDPR requirements. We constantly are having our platform reassessed in terms of ISO certification and other certification metrics to ensure that we are meeting the toughest standards as an organization. And it's it's a privilege to work with organizations to be able to deliver on that trust promise and ensure that they can do the same for their employees and, and business as a whole. The key development that I believe many of us have already heard about would be 
this new wave of AI and machine learning coming into mm. play, ChatGPT specifically. And I have had some time to play around with the tool and it can even take on certain persona. In fact, one of the prompts that I came across is for ChatGPT to take on the persona of a coach and mm. maintain that persona so that I can continue to ask different questions while it come back and reply to my questions as if it is a coach. Have you seen that in play? And how do you think that might evolve in this particular space as it become more and more invasive? Would it somewhat be a threat or even a potential replacement to the way coaching is being delivered? It's a great question. And I am loving hearing all of the different ways that ChatGPT is being utilized these days. It's performance review process for many companies. And the best I heard the other day was, writing performance reviews for your team manager. So I'm appreciating the innovation that humans are applying to this technology. I've been um, using it to write LinkedIn testimonial. It's so much easier. Uh, <laughs> I heard that one too. <laughs> That's exciting. Great question. Great observation. We have a particular view, point of view in terms of AI and how that supports the digital coaching process. And the core part of our technology is our artificial intelligence-based machine learning algorithm that matches coaches with the employees based on a large amount of criteria and data. So preferences can be put in, what your coach should be, language, time zone, age, gender, et cetera, but also some psychometric aspects like somebody's whether somebody's more extrovert, introvert, and so on to have found the most perfect matching process here. In that in itself, we believe and are seeing is providing the most impactful and relevant coaching and learning experience for employees because suddenly it's putting the participant in the driver's seat, right? They're having the opportunity to select the type of profile and person that makes sense to them and kickstarts that that coach curation process. In terms of um, whether that's a robot that's being coached, that's certainly not the vision of Coach Hub. We work with the world's best coaches globally who have who have certified and accredited at the highest standards, have life experience that they're bringing into the conversation, as well as over 500 plus minimum hours of professional coaching experience. That's something that a, a robot today isn't able, to, isn't able to predict. I think the strength and the benefit is the ability to ask questions that provoke, that provide refl pause, reflection for the participant. And really, we push more in terms of the coaching practices being evidence-based, right, which is backed by our behavioral science and our coaching lab who continue to re redefine and review the psychological models that we have in our matching process. And I think importantly, ChatGPT doesn't really have the life story, the mm -hmm. experience to really connect that to what the coachee is trying to learn. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we learn best from stories. Mm -hmm. We don't learn best from theories or whatever formula framework that you have. But stories can only be possible if someone has lived through it. Mm -hmm. ChatGPT, unfortunately, is more of a factual model, which doesn't really allow it to have a lot of its own genuine stories. On the other note, I would like to go into the softer side of coaching. I had a chat with someone earlier today and he happens to be acquiring his coaching certification and he works in a bank. The bank, even though it's quite sizable, has yet to really roll out something structured as much as he personally feels that it should be in place. Mm. Apparently, there seems to be some resistance on the benefits to coaching on why coaching should even matter. Can you talk more about the kind of resistance that company may have, perhaps due to misconception of coaching? And mm. importantly, what are they missing out if they continue to resist this possible model of learning? It's a great observation. It's one that we've certainly seen in the in the companies that we've been talking through. I will say, I think that perception is evolving. As a company, Coach Hub has been around for the last four or five years. I've just had the privilege of having our co-founder and CEO, Yanis, in the region the last few weeks. We've been traveling around to Japan, Australia, Singapore, Greater China, and having conversations with many of the clients and companies that we're working with. And one of the observations that Yanis made with me is that many of the conversations with these companies is feels like where it was in Germany four or five years ago, where there is some companies that are starting to get a sense like, hey, we should be doing something different. We should be a different way of us engaging with our employees. This one size fits all approach or the traditional classroom approach or slapping out e-learning everywhere isn't really getting us the uplift that we need. What else is there? And he was sharing that this is the type of discussions that we're being have with um with com the big German companies like the Volkswagen, the Daimler, the Schneider, big enterprises, which are now some of the more progressive organizations in the world who, are, who have adopted these things. So I think we, are, we in this region, in Asia Pacific, are adopting and catching up and trying to jump ahead of the curve. And I think 
the fact that we have larger population base, typically a wider generational workforce, we have increasing demands, GD, higher GDP, GDP expectations, suggests that businesses here need to be doing something different. We certainly like to have the discussions around how effective is status, like what you're doing today, is it getting you the results that you need? And if not, let's talk about what the options are. And our vision is that we have organizations who buy into our mission, which is to democratize coaching to people of all levels, allow and afford the opportunity for people to have a moment to themselves, to take stock, to reset, to become more confident in what they're doing, become more confident in terms of setting vision or having balance or resilience, whatever these characteristics are, which helps them develop as a person, inspire as a leader, and importantly, provide greater impact to the businesses that they're working in today. And if a company is keen to pursue this initiative, what are some of the baby steps you would recommend? Because we imagine that we may want to do a small pilot, an experiment to make sure it works. Are there specific functions, levels that they should go for as a first step? Or do you have other suggestions that you think it might be better for them to take as a means to get deeper in the future into coaching? I think organizations today are all transforming, right? Responding to whatever market demands they're facing the economic uncertainty, the war for talent, whatever it might be. Our conversations these days are thinking about how do we support the people transformation efforts in that demand. So that's looking at a longer term vision in terms of what good looks like. And organizations who are going on that vision are starting to reap the rewards, right? So initially, it may be that our use case is for those things that are in front of our eyes, right? Typically, it's been mid-manager programs, as I've shared, high potential employees, layering, coaching, coaching elements on top of programs that may be in place. However, we're seeing the use cases expand dramatically. Leadership programs of any levels, women in leadership programs becoming particularly important, particularly in those markets where there are requirements in place, governmental requirements to diversify the workforce. We're seeing Generation X, Z as opportunities for those key talents to remain engaged and prepare them for the next cycle. We're also seeing some of our big companies thinking about this for those that they're offboarding, those at the retiring age, thinking about what's next, helping them think about their, the life that they, they'll be leading post-working 40-hour weeks as they've been doing the last 45 years and how they can give back to, but one, the society, but also help with that knowledge transfer in the organization as well. So we're seeing the use cases of coaching expanding every week, every time we're having conversations with different organizations. So our opportunity here is to work through where is the biggest impact today and let's continue to reap those rewards and build those results. And that's effectively the whole notion of Coach Hub. It's around this, those people who are, in, who are coached, they have a sphere around them of influence, right? Individuals, team members, direct reports, direct managers, peers, all of these people can feel the effects of an individual going through a coaching journey because it, it reaps the rewards of those around them. So our objective is to, to get that out into as many workforce can. One thing that I learned very clearly of Singapore employers and Singapore companies is that most of them are very risk averse. They do not want to be seen as the front runner or the guinea pig in trying any new initiatives. Do you have any case studies or use cases that you can cite, especially the names of the companies that you can share to help the listeners better understand that it is something very much possible. And importantly, what is the kind of rewards they manage to reap from this initiative? I think certainly agree about that sentiment of risk averse. I think that's happened, that's across the world in, in many in many companies and countries, there is that notion of it, it ain't broke, so why do we need to fix it? Development opportunities and the development of employees can no longer be these one-off classroom learning sessions on specific topics that were not revisited for the rest of the year. We know that people have more information, that people are feeling overexhausted. And importantly, when people are put through the typical or traditional training models, they'll forget most of what they've learned within a week. 70% of the information will be gone. 87% of the information will be forgotten within a month. And so a lifelong learning approach is essential. And that really resonates with Singapore and Asian organizations who are interested in a culture of continuous learning, and interested to take a more holistic approach to training and developing their most strategic asset. And so we're seeing organizations like Schneider, like the Braun, like Coca-Cola, like World Vision, who are going on those leaps and starting to see the expansive effects of coaching at different levels of their organization and considering how they continue to elevate this. 
I think the benefit of working with an organization like CoachUp is our global reach, right? We're present in 15 countries. We have 800 people across our organization responding and supporting companies who are looking to do something at scale and do it quickly and measure the effectiveness of those results over time through our platform and access to three and a half thousands of the world's top percent, top five percent business coaches. I think that that is the attracting fact for organizations to 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 go on this mission with us. Thank you so much, Tim, for sharing with us about coaching at large, as well as the digitalization of coaching, especially in the L&D space. And for people who is keen to learn more about what you do as well as Coach Up, where can they go to? www.coachhub.com. Awesome. This will be in the show notes. Thank you so much for coming on to the show today. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you for listening to the podcast. You can refer to the show notes for links to more information about our guests and their businesses. If you enjoyed this podcast, it will be helpful to give a review on iTunes or follow me on Spotify. If you are using Overcast, please hit the star button under the episode. That will help get this episode and podcast out to more people who may find it useful. I'll see you in the next episode of The Agent Han Show.